With sovereignty off the table and the economy doing very well, there are a lot of people asking why they should bother to vote on October the 1st. They also say that none of the political leaders are particularly inspiring. But is this what an election should be all about? And joining us, Tom Mulcair, and so nice to see you again. Hi, Mitsumi. Okay, so what do you say then? If somebody looks at you and says, sovereignty off the table, economy is great, why should I bother? What do you say to them? I get them to think about their kids and what kind of society they want to live in. Because right now, as we saw today, we've got a right-wing party, the CAC, doing a very good job in this campaign. But today they're dressing themselves up more as a progressive party, talking about better help for the elderly. At the same time, Mr. Legault, if you pay attention, is always talking about cuts to government. And people just went through a long series of cuts with the Liberals, and they're still smarting from that. So, yeah, it's important beyond the sovereignty federalism debate that we've had that's dominated Quebec politics for 50 years. Now we're into a more classic left-wing, right-wing debate. We've just got to get used to it. It's new in Quebec politics. Well, because it's, it's true, and this is something that I hear very, very often, that for some re well, for some reason, no, it's been, you know, a generation plus. When we think of a Quebec election, it's always about, are they separatists or Absolutely. federalists? We can't seem to get our head around, sometimes an election should be just about issues that are left versus right. right. And Quebecers do have a model for what Mr. Legault is proposing with the CAC, and it's the model that we used to know in the 60s called the U Union Nationale. It was e égalité ou indépendance. So we want equality or we'll have independence, but it wasn't straight up independence. You have to, again, pay attention to what Francois Legault is saying. Recently in Actualité magazine, he said, well, this is the first step in dealing with Ottawa, and he listed off a number of powers he wants to go and negotiate. Well, that opens the question to what's the next step, and those are steps toward what? And he's going to have to answer that type of question. But to be honest with you, everything that I've seen in this campaign so far, Francois Legault and his team have been doing a pretty darn good job of dealing with the problems when they arise, like Eric Kerr taking that loan from the mayor in Quebec City. They did a great job of managing that. And what we're seeing from the Liberals, unfortunately, for them, is that they keep reacting to Francois Legault, almost as if they're leaving him in the driver's seat. We'll see if the last four weeks of the campaign that we've just started now are going to change that. Do you think then, because another thing that I hear is, oh, you know, the Liberals and the CAQ are just so f similar. You know, you keep pointing out how the CAQ is more right than the Liberals. Are we wrong then in thinking that, oh, their platforms are very similar, they're very similar, we should just be looking at the leaders? If you're a member of a cultural community, you've probably picked up for a long time on the discourse of Francois de Gaulle. When he talks about immigrants and lowering the number of immigrants, he's sending a signal to a certain part of his base. And that signal is starting to be picked up by members of cultural community who at the beginning were willing to look at Francois de Gaulle as a possible option. I think that that's starting to diminish as we head into the campaign. The most recent polls showed that, that there's a backsliding of the progress he had thought he had made with Anglophones and Allophones. At the same time, he's picking a fight with Ottawa. He's using code words against First Nations. There was a big Apuyat wind farm that was planned with the Innu Nation north of uh, the St. Lawrence. He had a lot to say about that, but again, it was coded language that could be picked up as being against them. But at, in the final analysis, Mitsumi, what he's going to have to answer is the following question. Mr. Legault, how can you keep promising to cut spending and then at the same time increase services. In any government I've seen, you can't do both of those things. And people have already been through a lot of instability. He's promising to take 80,000 bucks out of the pocket of every medical specialist. Well, that's more problems in healthcare. That's not a solution. So Quebecers are going to have to decide. You know, but you're saying that there are all sort of, you know, underlying things that people can pick up if sure. they listen to the discourse. But, but the question is, are they? Because what you get are you know, people generally sort of turning off politics, not really wanting to pay attention. We heard, you know, in the last municipal campaign, oh, we're going to vote for her because she's a woman, she's got a great smile. You know, people are looking at the CAQ and the Liberals and they're saying, well, I don't know, I like him and I, and I, I don't know, I don't like him. You know, and, and so I think that is the fear, that most people are not going to be looking at the issues as closely as you. But personality does play a lot. Mm -hmm. And right now, I think that if you look at the campaigns, Jean-Francois Lisée has shown more energy and drive than the other two leaders. And yet the Liberals and the CAC, very close, the CAC slightly ahead, have actually been dominating completely. And there's been no movement on the PQ side. So there's a limit to how much that that's going to play into any campaign. But over the weekend, I was talking to a group of people and I heard somebody say, you know, I've been listening. It's 
so far I uh, like what the CAC is saying. I can't stand Francois Legault's voice, and I'm sort of going, well, what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> yeah, but that's, sometimes that's what it comes down to, <laughs> yeah. right? You, I mean, you, you know, we were sitting here before, and you were saying, oh, I hope I didn't wear this tie last time. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, sometimes it comes down <laughs> exactly. to that. Exactly. But I also want to ask you about Quebec Solidaire and a, and a role that a party like that plays in a campaign. Because, you, you know, we, we know they're not going to form the next government. They even but, admit that. Yes, but they do... But they kind of push the boundaries, don't they, in yes. terms of the issues? Yes, and they're trying to define what a progressive view of Quebec would be. They have also made concessions to bring in uh, a, a rather strongly uh, partisan group of uh, sovereignists. And they've made a point of making themselves a sovereignist party, and that's actually hurt them with some of the young Anglo progressives who saw themselves reflected in Quebec Solidaire but couldn't follow them with some of the people who came along on the sovereignty side. That being said, when they're clear about an immediate $15 an hour minimum wage, people know that they're sincere and they would do it. When they're clear about the type of spending that they would do to make people's lives better and going after the large companies, that's a very clear option. The problem is, of course, we live in a North American market and in a Canadian market. So if they were to say, for example, as they have, that they're going to go headlong and massively increase taxes on all of the corporations, those corporations have options, and that would hurt jobs. So the, they don't have to square that, because for now they can just put forward this great wish list. I think that Manon Massé has been running a great campaign. We'll see how she does in the debates. Um, I don't know how good her English is. I think it might be a bit difficult for her in the English debate. But she's a woman full of ideas. She's a passionate woman. I've known her for decades. And uh, she's, you know, good, good thing that they're there because they are bringing forward a lot of those yeah, forward-looking they, they ideas. Push, yeah, they yeah. push things like they let's get rid of all, you know, all gas-powered cars. Sure. And, 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 you know, everybody is going to agree with that in theory. And we'll actually be able to do it in practice the day we have an affordable electric car. Um, so is this really, do you think, this week, the start of the real election Absolutely. campaign? Absolutely. This morning, the Tuesday after Labor Day, was the first real day back at work and at school. All you had to do is look at the traffic <laughs> this morning to know about that. And it's the same thing for the campaign. Forget whatever happened in August. Now the real campaign starts. Almost four full weeks left to go. It's been a breathtaking campaign, one of the most exciting ones I've seen in my life. But as the Journal de Montréal pointed out last week, after only one week of the campaign, they had together promised $20 billion in spending. Let's see what that total comes at the end of the campaign, Mitsumi. Yeah, and you wonder why people get cynical, right? <laughs> Anyways, we'll speak to you next week. Great. Thank you so much. Thank we'll you. be right back.